Trinidad and Tobago, and thank you for joining us for worship here on Moments of Inspiration. I am Amber Cesar High Payne, a student deaconess with the Presbyterian Church of Trinidad and Tobago. Today, I am assisting Ms. Petra Mahabal Singh Miraj from the Kanupia Presbyterian Church, which is in the Shagona's pastoral region. During this time of Lent, when we contemplate the sacrifice of Jesus Christ and our own shortcomings as human beings, we here at Moments of Inspiration join together with the World Council of Churches on the theme, Christ's Love moves the world through unity and reconciliation. Today, we begin our series by looking at the way Christ's love moves through friendship. I invite you now to join with me in prayer. Everlasting God, we give you thanks. Thanks for bringing us this fabulous day to live, to worship and serve you. Jesus, you are the friend who sticks closer than a brother. You are the friend who made yourself our servant in life that you might make us your friend in eternity. You are the friend who laid down your life on the cross that you might lift us up in glory. Help our relationship with you grow daily. Guide us and direct us in your ways and your wisdom. In your name we pray. Amen. This morning we are blessed to have with us Dr. Alicia Gaia Bachasing leading us in worship. She is currently a teacher at the Brothers Presbyterian Primary School and a choir leader for the Tabaki Presbyterian Church. She blesses us with the beautiful song, How Deep the Father's Love for Us. The Father's love for us, how vast beyond all measure that He should give His only Son to make a wretch's treasure. How great the pain of searing loss, the Father turns His face away. As wounds which mar the chosen one Bring many sons to glory Behold the man upon the cross my sin upon his shoulders Ashamed I hear my mocking voice Call out among the scoffers It was my sin that held him there Until it was accomplished His dying breath has brought me I know that it is finished I will not boast in anything No gifts, no power, no wisdom But I will boast in Jesus Christ his death and resurrection Why should I gain from His reward? I cannot give an answer But this I know with all my heart His wounds have paid my ransom Why should I gain from His reward?
you so much, Alicia. I invite you to read with me now from Holy Scripture, the Gospel of John, chapter 5, and verses 2 to 9. Now there is in Jerusalem, by the sheep gate a pool, which is called in Hebrew, Bethesda, having five porches. In these laid a great multitude of sick people, blind, lame, paralyzed, waiting for the moving of the water. For an angel went down at a certain time into the pool and stirred up the water. Then whoever stepped in first after the stirring of the water was made well of whatever disease he had. Now a certain man was there who had an infirmity 38 years. When Jesus saw him lying there and knew that he had already been in that condition a long time, he said to him, Do you want to be made well? The sick man answered him, Sir, I have no man to put me into the pool when the waters is stirred up. But while I am coming, another steps down before me. Jesus said to him, Rise, take up your bed and walk. And immediately the man was made well, took up his bed and walked. This is the word of God. Thanks be to God for his word. Amen. Miss Petra Mahabal Singh Maharaj from the Kanupia Presbyterian Church now proclaims God's word. Friends, I invite you to join with me in a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for all that we are about to receive. And we pray, Lord, that you will open our eyes that we might see Jesus. Open our ears that we might hear him. Open our hearts to receive this message. And open the lips of this thy servant to speak your word fearlessly and well. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Joseph Scriven was an Irishman who led a remarkable life. At a young age, he was engaged to his childhood love, who died by accident on the day before their wedding. Emotionally shattered by the death of his love, he turned to God for consolation and guidance. He left Ireland and went to Canada in 1845. His greatest desire was to reflect the love of God in his life and God's grace. So he helped the sick, the poor, the widowed, those who could not reimburse him. He was a living light of charity and faith and came to be known as the Good Samaritan of Port Hope. He later fell in love with Eliza Catherine Roche. They were engaged to be married, yet only weeks before the wedding, Eliza became ill with pneumonia and died at the age of 23. Once again, Scriven was heartbroken by the death of a woman he loved. Once again, he found strength by turning to God a God he looked upon as his closest friend. The following year, Scriven wrote a poem to his mother in Ireland. His words described this extraordinary friendship that had given him purpose and hope in the face of tragedy and devastating pain. That poem is now famously known as the timeless hymn, What a Friend We Have in Jesus. Scriven understood the tremendous friendship we have in the person of Jesus Christ. He believed in 1 Peter 5 verse 7, which says that we are to cast all our care upon Jesus because he cares for us. In chapter 5 of John's Gospel, we see the effect of casting our cares upon Jesus, our friend. A man had been ill for 38 years. He was lying outside the temple in Jerusalem by a pool which is called in Hebrew, Bethesda. On finding him there, Jesus asks, Do you want to be made well? The sick man answers by telling Jesus about his problem. Jesus responds by telling the man, Rise, take up your bed and walk. The Bible tells us that immediately the man was made well. This man at Bethesda carried this problem on his own for 38 years without relief. Yet, the moment he gave his problem to Jesus, he was made whole. He arose, 
took up his bed and walked. The Greek word used for walk in John chapter 5 verse 8 is peripateo, meaning to live. After 38 years, this infirm man was finally able to live. After one encounter with Jesus, he was healed. He was made whole. His entire life changed. The name Bethesda means house of mercy. It was at Bethesda that this suffering, afflicted man met grace and mercy. He met favor and compassion in the person of Jesus Christ. He had been failed by human beings for so long since he had no one to put him into the pool when the water was first troubled. Yet, he found a friend in Jesus. He found healing. He found love at the feet of the Savior. Mercy, saving us from a punishment we deserve, and grace, blessing us as we do not deserve, are two sides of a single coin, and that coin is love. Mercy is compassionate love to the weak, and grace is generous love to the unworthy. As human beings, we all suffer from moments of weakness, and we all need God's mercy and grace. Mercy takes us to the path of forgiveness, while grace leads us to friendship. We don't have to be strong or perfect for Jesus to call us friends. 2 Corinthians chapter 12 verse 9 tells us that his grace is made perfect in our weakness. And if we look at Jesus' life, we see truth in that statement. He was always lifting the weak. He was a friend to all those he met. He caused them to rise and walk. A paralyzed man, a man in the synagogue with a shriveled hand, Jairus' daughter who was raised from the dead and blind Bartimaeus. Even as he was dying, Jesus lifted the thief on the cross next to him. Jesus was even called the friend of sinners because he would actually sit down and have a conversation with a prostitute, a tax collector, even a Samaritan woman. He extended his friendship to anyone who wanted it. He gave hope hope to the hopeless, help to the helpless, and continues to extend his hand of friendship to us today. All we have to do is come to him. All we have to do is start a conversation with him. All we have to do is give him our problems. In speaking to his disciples, Jesus said, greater love has no one than this, that someone lay down his life for his friends. Jesus modeled this great love by giving his life for us. God's friendship means unconditional love, all-knowing intimacy, perfect provision, and soul security. This demonstration of friendship now becomes the foundation of love that we must share with others. As he told us, we love because he first loved us. Many of our friendship issues arise because we think that people should respond as God does, or we assume that God responds to us as imperfect people do. Two friends were on a hiking trail together. As the day was hot, they had taken off their t-shirts and shoes. While on the trail, they came across a sign which said, beware of the bears. One of them turned around to find the other putting on his t-shirt and shoes. So he asked his friend, do you think you could outrun a bear? To which the friend replied, I don't have to outrun the bear. I only have to outrun you. Sometimes our friends forsake us. They leave us when we go through our difficulties. But we have a savior who has promised that he will neither leave us nor forsake us. Jesus can heal us everywhere we hurt. Only he can make us whole. Only he can cause us to rise. As we hold on to Jesus and look to him for ultimate friendship, let us extend love to others in imitation of that love that Jesus first showed to us. And we can do this in several simple ways. First, we serve others without expecting anything in return. 
Second, we allow others to do things for us when we know that we cannot return the favor. And third, we show grace through generosity, encouragement, and kindness, and we show mercy through forgiveness. Joseph Scriven found peace, strength, and refuge in his friend Jesus. Jesus is extending the hand of friendship to us today so that we too may find peace, strength, and refuge. Will you give him your problems as the sick man did at Bethesda? As we begin this Lenten period, I encourage you to start a conversation with Jesus. Talk to him every day as you would talk to your friend. Tell him your problems. Give him your troubles. I pray that each of us will come to know the great friend we have in Jesus. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Before we head into a time of prayer, I am I invite you to listen to the words of this timeless hymn and reflect on God's friendship with us. What a friend we have Jesus, all our sins and griefs to bear. What a privilege to carry everything to God in prayer. Oh, what peace! We often forfeit Oh, what needless pain we bear All because we do not carry Everything to God in prayer
Bow with me and pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you that we have such a friend in Jesus, that you did not leave us alone, O God, but you sent someone to comfort us, someone to be our strength, someone to be our solace, someone to be our guard and guide. We praise you for your son, and we lift up today in his name the sick among us, those who are suffering, those who have suffered so many years and are longing for that refuge and that peace that can only be found in the arms of Jesus. We pray that you who are able to heal them will touch them in accordance with your will and bring them healing, bring them wholeness, help them to rise, take up their mats and walk. And we pray, O oh God, our Father, that as we go through this Lenten period, that Jesus will go with us to make our crooked places straight. Bless us, we pray in his name. Amen. Thank you very much, Miss Petra, for your inspiring message on Christ's love, moving through friendship and bringing healing to so many lives. This month of March begins with two powerful days of prayer for women. The World Day of Prayer 2020 has been prepared by the women of Zimbabwe. Based on the scripture we read from today, John chapter 5, verses 2 to 9. It follows the theme, rise, take up your mat and walk. You are invited to join with our Presbyterian Church women nationwide as we join together to lift one another in prayer this Friday, March 6. This theme will be continued on Sunday, March 8th, when PCTT joins in the celebration of International Women's Day. Ladies will occupy all Presbyterian pulpits across Trinidad and Tobago to proclaim God's word. So we do hope you will join us in worship at any of our 107 congregations that is nearest to your home. Also taking place this month, the Board of Theological Education, together with the St. Andrews Theological College, will be hosting our annual elders retreat on Saturday the 21st of March. It is a day when all our elders and theological minds gather to praise God and be in fellowship with one another. If you would like more details, you can contact the college at 657-7554 or like and follow SATC on Facebook or Instagram. As we come to a close now of our time in devotions on the focus on friendship, I invite Dr. Alicia Gaia Bachesing of the Tabaki Presbyterian Church to share with us once more in song, In Christ Alone. In Christ alone, my hope is found. He is my light, my strength, my song This cornerstone, this solid ground Firm through the fiercest drought and storm What heights of love, what depths of peace When fears are stilled, when striving cease My comforter my all in all here in the love of christ i stand in christ alone who took on flesh fullness of god in helpless babe this gift of love and righteousness Scorned by the ones he came to save Till on that cross as Jesus died The wrath of God was satisfied For 
for every sin on him was laid here in the death of Christ I live there in the ground his body lay light of the world by darkness slain then bursting forth in glorious day up from the grave he rose again and as he stands in victory since curse has lost its grip on me for i am his and he is mine bought with the precious blood of christ no guilt in life no fear in death this is the power of christ in me from life's first cry to final breath Jesus commands my destiny No power of hell No scheme of man Can ever pluck me from his hand Till he returns Or calls me home Here in the power of Christ I'll stand Thank you so much, Alicia, for blessing us with your gift and being a part of our worship today. As we contemplate on today's message, I invite you to head over to our YouTube page, Presbyterian Church Trinidad and Tobago, where you can find all 194 of our episodes ready and waiting for you to share with the world or to use at your churches for a Bible study. You can also like and follow us on Facebook at Moments of Inspiration for clips throughout the week. And we also warmly welcome you to join us in worship and person at any of our Presbyterian churches near your home. You can find all our locations and contact information at our website www.pctt.org.tt. Friends, Thank you for being with us during our time of devotion. We hope you have a wonderful week ahead and I leave you now with today's moment of inspiration. What a friend we have in Jesus.